And just like that, the Emirates prepares for another game, but it's not the game you thought I'd be talking about. It's Arsenal women against Manchester City women at the Emirates Stadium. I'll actually be doing a preview of the men's game. It's Arsenal Man City up at the Etihad. It is a very rainy day here in North London. I have a coffee in hand and I think it's time for us to do a lap of the stadium and preview Man City's game against Arsenal. The two wildly informed teams in the Premier League take each other on in a top of the table clash. The winner will be first after game week five. A lot of people outside of Arsenal circles will say it's unfair to even compare them with Man City, their success, their dominance of the league. But if you actually look at when I say in form, the last 22 games played, it's Arsenal have won 19, drawn two and lost one. Phenomenal and in any other season, league winning form. For Man City, those same 22 games reads as 19 wins, three draws, no losses. So whatever happens and the outcome of this result, someone's record is gonna be tarnished. So the big thing about this game, it's yet another game where I find myself walking around a North London establishment whilst Arsenal are actually playing in a different part of the country. And as Arsenal head to the Etihad, I kind of think back to last season where it was Arsenal nil, Man City nil, in a game that some people have said was the reason Arsenal didn't win the league, although I really suspect the drop points against Fulham and West Ham at home are a much bigger uh, input to that than what we did up at the Etihad. But there was an important point about last year. We didn't concede at the Etihad. That is not something Man City have had to deal with very often. Not only that, but actually over both games last season, Man City didn't score against Arsenal. There's not many teams in world football who can say that. It was 1-0 to the Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. It was 0-0 up at the Etihad. And on both occasions, William Saliba had Haaland absolutely in his pocket. And what this fixture has really highlighted is when Haaland doesn't score, Man City don't really look as good as you think they do. A lot of people will say, yes, yes, but he does score, and therefore he'll go into this fixture and score again. But if he doesn't score for the third successive time against Arsenal, and Saliba sits him down like he's done in the other two games, you have to really start questioning, is this the chink in the armour that Arsenal need to utilise and show other teams how to utilise to make sure that Man City start dropping points? One thing that will have buoyed on all Arsenal fans is David Raya's penalty and follow-up rebound save against Atalanta earlier in the week. I say it every week on here, the guy is world class. A lot of people have questioned that statement and said it's far too early for us to be saying that or people are getting overexcited. But he has three clean sheets out of four in the Premier League. He has a clean sheet in the Champions League and not just a clean sheet, but phenomenal saves worthy of being player of the match in all of his games where he's kind of produced these big moments. When you couple that with the arrival of Urien Timber looking solid and well in his position at left back, considering he's basically had a whole year out to just study what Arteta wants him to study. Ben White being dependable as usual, and Gabriel really popping up again like he did last season as Saliba's perfect partner. I thought going into the Spurs game, a lot of people played down the importance of Gabriel. In combined 11s, Mickey van der Ven was often chosen by, well, let's be honest, mainly Spurs fans who are a bit delusional. But a lot of people have seen Gabriel as maybe the weak link in this setup. And I think what I'd say to that is if Gabriel is your weakest player, you're probably going to keep as many clean sheets as Arsenal do. I fully expect this defensive unit to not switch off, to not have an embarrassing moment against City. Maybe it's a watch this space moment and you can look back to this video and leave a comment if that doesn't happen. But Arsenal just looks solid at the back. If I rewind a week and think about the Spurs fixture, the big concern was our central midfield. Declan Rice was banned for a game, Erdegaard was out, and of course new signing Mikel Marino is still yet to get to full fitness following that training incident uh, where Gabriel fell on him and I guess just did his shoulder in. This week though, Declan Rice is back and he'll have a point to prove. This is a player who could have gone to Man City, they had the money on the table, and I think it would have been accepted by West Ham had he wanted that direction. But he turned them down for Arsenal, and he was phenomenal in his first season with us. But going into it now, he will want to prove that he's maybe not Rodri's equal, but he's totally worthy of being at a top Premier League side, and that he's really kicked on since those West Ham days, which were fantastic to start with. I don't think it's got a point to prove to Arsenal fans, but I think to Man City fans and the wider public, there'll be huge scrutiny on what Declan Rice can produce. And I feel expect the pre-match um, uh, preamble to be, is Declan Rice good enough? What are his numbers against Rodri? How does he stack up? 
another narrative for us worth exploring as I go through turnstile E, where the Arsene Wenger holding the trophy above us is, is Raheem Sterling. Does he have a point to prove? The ex-Man City player, the ex-Liverpool player and the ex... Well, is he an ex-Chelsea player? I guess he's just on loan. We'll want to prove to Pep and, and Arteta that he's capable of pulling apart this Man City defence. He knows how it ticks, he's trained with it a lot. And I think you might see game minutes from Raheem Sterling in ways that we didn't see against Tottenham. So interesting fact about this, this is where you can get your beer. This is where you get your match day merch. It is going to be Arsenal women against Man City women. And I would say, get yourself to the stadium and enjoy the match day experience here. It's one of the best ones you can get, certainly in the women's game. But also, it's better than most men's games, if I'm honest. The fans are vitriolic. The team on the pitch are fantastic. Jonas Eideval is the manager and he's got attacking and beautiful football. And it'll be the return of Vivian Miedemar, who moved to Man City over the summer. So watch it on TV. If you can get a last minute ticket, get it. Arsenal will be playing, I don't know, about 80 or 90% of their home games at the Emirates this season. So if you're watching this as a men's fan, get into the women's game. It's super fun, great match day experience, not just for you, but for the whole family. So enjoy. Now, one player that's hugely under the cosh at the moment is Gabriel Martinelli. He just keeps missing big opportunities in front of goal. And I said last week, whether it's by hook or by crook, if he can just put a ball in the net, I think he'll be all fixed and back to usual. He looks like a confidence player, but he really does need to get a goal or an assist. In last year's fixture at the Emirates, he was the match winner with a 1-0 win, albeit a slightly deflected shot. What any Arsenal fan would give for that again? Absolutely, yes, please. How do you break Man City down then? Do you keep the ball? Do you defend with a very tight press like Arsenal did against Spurs last week? I don't think anyone really knows. What I do know is this side proved last season that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Man City side. Arteta clearly has the DNA of both clubs within him. And actually, I was saying to a friend before this game, I have more faith in Arteta preparing for one-off fixtures than I do against Guardiola doing it. I feel like Pep's got a little bit complacent where for a lot of his fixtures, he can just play his own game and he doesn't need to consider the opposition. This will be a huge matchup between Pep and Arteta on which one of them has best prepped for the other team. And actually, there's part of me that thinks Man City won't really know what to do with this Arsenal side. Do they do what they do last season and hope for a draw against us? Or do they come out with a bit more ambition? Time will tell. I would love to sit here grandstanding about the results that Arsenal might get and say it's going to be a huge win. But let's be honest, who would ever say Man City will drop points? What I do know is one of these teams is going to win the title. They are so far clear of those around them in terms of footballing ability on the pitch and just the confidence and swagger off the pitch. I think Arsenal will get something from this game. I'm going to go with a 2-1 a win against the run of play. I'll be wrong if I didn't think Arsenal could win. Let me know below in the comments who you think is going to win this game. Anyone who gets it completely right, with a goal scorer as well, can have a free pair of Havaena flip-flops. And there we can go. That concludes another lap of the stadium. If you've liked these videos, please give a thumbs up. As usual, leave a comment and consider subscribing. But as for now, enjoy your Sunday football. It's a Man City Arsenal double header. I'll be watching from the safety of my home where it's not raining. Next week, I think we return to an actual home fixture. As ever, be good humans, do good things, and wherever you're enjoying it, have a great footballing weekend.